Recently on my Instagram story, I posted, why are you stuck in gold? Please answer. I'm doing a tips and tricks video, so I need feedback. And I got actually a lot of good feedback from you guys. So in this video, I just want to break down some of the answers and I want to try to reply and help to the best of my ability. Before the video starts, make sure you drop a like, sub, and comment since this is my new channel, since my other one got hacked. So in the meantime, I'll be posting on here. So all the support is appreciated and needed. Thank you. Now, the most common thing I've actually seen between the gold players that answered was recoil control and panicking in clutch situations or just not knowing like perfect positioning. So when it comes to recoil control, I know this sounds silly, but just go into T-Hunt. It sounds like you don't understand your sensitivity one bit, and you actually need to take the time to sit down and try to figure out your sensitivity. I, tr I look at gold players as being more of casual players, and that's totally okay if that's what you want to be. But if you truly want to improve, you need to take the time to sit down and figure out your sensitivity. When it comes to clutch situations, or just in general, those types of situations where you're left in a 1vx, I like to take this philosophy and basically thinking that I'm not going to clutch it, it kind of relieves the anxiety and worry, and you just got to kind of just play. You got to play off your instincts. If you have enough IQ, then you you should be able to clutch it out to the best of your ability. Sometimes some situations just isn't winnable, because the moment that you start sitting there worrying about like your aim or like what your teammates are thinking or any of that, you're going to start panicking and you're going to play a lot worse and you're probably just going to potato and lose a round. At the end of the day, like, what's the worst that can happen? You're going to lose a round? So, like, like, cool. The best thing you can do is learn from that mistake or that situation. And instead of blaming your teammates for dying right away, which, of course, definitely their fault for dying, you just got to learn from it, man. Like, you can't just sit there and, like, wonder what's happening. You know, you, you got to analyze what you could have done better and how you can improve as a player. One person said, I'm not, but I think people are mostly stuck in gold because they don't five stack. I don't think that's true at all. My first ever season, I was gold one on console back in year one. And from there, like I was just going off LFGs or solo queuing. And right now on PC, I'm basically solo queue, duo, duo queue, and trio queue. I definitely think that people are only gold because they either don't have enough playtime or they're not playing the game as it's supposed to be which is team coordination intel base and utility based and most of the time sometimes it's not the person's fault because of course they don't have players that want to compete like they do so that definitely makes sense in that aspect but i don't think that it's because solely on because they don't five stack that's very it's a very silly like point of view a lot of people like to blame smurfs and all that but like realistically what smurfs are prevalent where they're slamming everybody in gold constantly. Like, you're not facing a smurf every other game. Like, when you think you would get better from facing those smurfs? And if there's smurfs in gold in that low of elo, then, to be honest, the, the, the person that's smurfing is pretty bad. So, I just think it's what I said. I think it's the time played and then, like, how they approach the game. Since, uh, next person said, I'm not, but for video purpose, I push down enemies and I peek unnecessary things in late rounds. This is definitely a very bad habit when it comes to actually both things that he said, push down enemies and peeking unnecessary things in late rounds. Uh, the first thing that he said is definitely, definitely true when it comes to gold players. Uh, I feel like gold and low plat players, they really tend to think that KD is what matters. And I understand sometimes you do got to get the down enemy, but when you're taking multiple gunfights, that shouldn't be your main goal. Especially when it's in a 1vx situation. Your KD doesn't matter. If you want to take your crosshair placement from aiming head level to somebody that's downed. And then think that you can readjust right away and kill another person that's going to engage with you. You're smoking crack. Because you're definitely going to lose that gunfight. And there's you know, no way you can actually clutch the round. You're actually handicapping yourself thinking that your kills and stats matter. And I think this is definitely a huge factor of like plat three players and gold players. They just constantly worry about this. And it's definitely a toxic part of that community. Cause I remember when I was like around that low plat area back in, back on console, um, even, and even now, cause like I'm plat two and when I solo queue, it just comes down to my teammates either not communicating and then complaining about someone having a bad game or their stats. And it just ends up being a whole goddamn mess. The peaking unnecessary things in late rounds, that is something I've seen actually a lot of gold players when they replied to that uh, question on Instagram. A lot of them said that they do that, like they either put themselves in very bad positions or 
they don't know what to do in late round situations. Your best bet when you're in that late round situation, whether it's a 1vx or like you have man advantage, if you have man advantage, you should be playing off the other man. You shouldn't be running and trying to swing and get the kill. You guys should be holding crossfires and playing off refrag in that situation. You don't need to peek most of the time. If it's especially if it's like a 1v3, 2v3, 2v1, like you have man advantage. Just hold an angle. One of you guys might die. That's cool. It happens. Or play your utility. Like for example, a lot of I see like echoes in like gold. They rather swing and die instead of use their echo cams. A lot of people in late round situations where it's a 1v1, if they can, they'll try to escape sight and run away and you just play off their echo cams because they don't need to they don't need to engage in the gunfight so i feel like that's something gold players need to be more aware of in those types of situations is just seeing like do i have utility to, to deny him what can i do to delay him or what can i do to play off a refrag next person says i'm not gold anymore but when i was no one used their drones that is definitely a huge factor uh Something I notice in that ELO, when players start a round off, they'll tend to either not use their drone at all or just throw their drone in sight and just start live pinging just to get destroyed. That initial drone is so important because it's 10% of your team's overall intel and you can use that to either pick it up and use it late in the round and set up maybe a flank drone for somebody that's dead or it can help for your initial starting push, which is, for example, you can put a drone maybe pre-placed or... You can do many other things. Anything is better than wasting your drone at the start of the round. Because like I said, that's 10% of your overall team's intel and drones save rounds. Drones will help you in post-plant scenarios when, say, if it's you, have, you don't have man advantage and you need eyes on, for example, your flank. But a lot of people just tend to throw their drones or they just don't care. Uh, something I hate is when, for example, I die and I go to spectate drones and there's two random drones lurking at a wall or in spawn at a wall so that's something you need to be more aware of is your drone economy and just try your best to use your drones to the best of, it, of its ability you don't need to be live pinging the only time you should live ping is possibly in the crunch like 10 second mark when there's like five 10 seconds left before they get a plan try to spook the enemy or if you are solo queue and the people don't have mics because i know a lot of people on console do not use game chat so I guess, like, it is a very bad habit. I wouldn't suggest it. Maybe try to call out in game chat. The next person says, I understand call outs, but aim and game sense can be improved. Like I said, terrorist hunt, aim, training, like, mastering aim, whether it's on console and you're using controller or you're on PC, it does take time. It's not something you're just going to pick up and be great at. It definitely takes time. But besides game sense, like, there's a lot of things you can do to actually improve that game sense, whether, you know, sometimes it's just playing the game. Playing with better people is probably your best bet to get the hands-on experience because, you know, you can ask them questions if they're open and, you know, you're actually friends with them. Or if they're just nice people, you know, you can converse, talk about it, and maybe they can break down. Or, for example, you can go into Twitch streamers' chats, uh, you can watch YouTube videos, YouTube comments. There's a lot of things you can do. Or, I, I especially would say watch Pro League because that is the highest tier of gameplay in Siege, and that's probably the best bet when it comes to try to uh, mimic a playstyle, because it's definitely more coordinated and the game's played how it's supposed to. Uh, this is something I've seen consistently, is players say they're inconsistent. How, how are you determine your consistency? Is it based on stats, or is it based on your team-based playstyle? That's two different things. This game is a very complex game with a simple stat like KD, so you shouldn't be basing how you're playing based on your KD. This game is also a mixture of timing, and, you know, sometimes you just have the best luck, and sometimes you have the worst luck, and that's okay. But you gotta ask yourself, what are you doing for the team besides shooting your weapon? Because there are something called uh, empty frags, so for example, like, are you using your utility properly? Are you droning? Is your drone work fine? Are you playing off your teammates? Like, there's a bunch of things that you can be doing to improve that will make you more consistent when you you're not getting kills and when you're not getting kills you have to realize man everybody has bad games or everybody just has bad luck sometimes it just happens if you if you throw yourself off and you get in a bad mood guess what's gonna happen you're gonna play like crap and you're gonna continue to play like crap the more irritated you get the more frustrated you get the worse you're gonna play your best bet is to be in the best mood possible and just vibe 
play for teammates, get in a flow state, and don't even think. If you sit there and overanalyze and overthink every situation, you're going to play worse. I'm telling you, when you're in a team atmosphere and you're calling out and actually vibing with your teammates, you guys are going to win way more. And it, hey, if you take L's, learn from it. That is your best bet. I, something I, I keep seeing from the answers is people blaming their teammates constantly, and that's the prime reason I think people are gold. Don't get me wrong, there is definitely jackasses in that ELO, in every ELO, to be honest, where you get very dumb teammates, and sometimes all you can do is blame teammates. But you have to realize that when you're in that ELO, you're, you're learning just like the next person is. So instead of downplaying somebody or down degrading them, try to help them learn. Try to teach them something you know, because maybe they can bounce something off of you, and then you guys can both learn something. Don't get me wrong, there's definitely egotistical people that don't want to learn, and to be honest, that's life. Stuff happens, but instead of blaming your teammates, ask yourself, what am I doing wrong as a player that's keeping me in this elo? Because if you think you're better than that next guy, then prove yourself. Literally grow from it. Like, I get it, solo queuing is awful. But what are you doing to get to stop solo queuing? There's a lot of things you can be doing to find people to play with. A lot of people just blame I solo queue. Well, you know what? Unless you're like have like an anxiety disorder where you like hate people, you you can literally go on Discord, you can go Instagram, you can go Twitter, you can go YouTube comments, Twitch chats, you can find people to play with. It's fairly simple, but it, the hardest part is finding people that you vibe with and that you mesh well with, whether it's gameplay personality wise all of that but i hope these questions with these answers actually helped you in some sense i think that if you actually watch this video with an open mind and try to you know listen to what i'm saying because like i speak from experience i've been playing this game since year one i i was gold at one point like my very first season i was plat three and i learned how to get better and once you throw that ego to the side because even though you might have better mechanics than somebody or you might be just a better player all around there's no point in shoving that in someone's face. Anyways, if you enjoy the video, I appreciate you. Have a lovely day.